everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. We'll start off this intro looking at this interesting structure that is taking shape on the southeast side of the new building extension. Now, there's been a lot of questions about what this is, myself included, and I've been doing a lot of research trying to figure out what this is. But so far, it's a bit of a mystery. Now, it'll have about six meter tall concrete column mounts, and we can see that with the tall rebar. Also, the wooden forms nearby and being placed, and very large footings. It also does not have a permit that I've been able to find under the city of Austin's uh, permit site, and it's under the Austin Energy Powerline easement. It's very interesting that this is developing. And as mentioned, there's two parallel rows of large footings and tall columns. And until I can figure out more about this, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. So put them in the comments of the video, and hopefully together we can figure out what is going on. Switching gears to a few news items, I was recently contacted by the Texas Corvette Association and apparently they are big fans of the Cybertruck and they would like to have my Cybertruck as a centerpiece display for their 31st annual uh, open car show at Bernie, Texas. And in addition to the Cybertruck, another featured exhibit will be a Time Machine DeLorean and of course hundreds of classic cars. This is the flyer, gives you information about uh, the car show. You can see there a link at the bottom left of the screen. It'll be in the video description if you would like to learn more. Of course, it'll be featuring my Cybertruck and me. I will be flying the drone documenting the event. The registration is at 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, silent auction, 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. The participant judging is 11 a.m. to 1 and awards 3 to 4 p.m. I hope you're able to come out and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Staying on the topic of cars, I recently did this photo with my 240Z and the Cybertruck, very different worlds. 51 years separates the two vehicles. I originally built this 240Z for my mom back in 1987. She gave it back to me in 2015, and it was just really great to finally get both of these vehicles together. And the last piece of news has to do with the Boring Company. They recently reached out to me and they've been very pleased with the coverage that I've been doing of the Boring Company tunneling operations at Giga Texas. So they've invited me to tour their Boring Company facility over in Bastrop, Texas. That should be coming up here on Thursday. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to document some of that experience and also pass along some information. It will also kind of change my flying schedule for this week, and we'll see how all of that works out. So otherwise, uh, that's the news for today. So let's get the drone in the air and see what Giga Texas looks like today. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Good early morning at a dark and cloudy Giga Texas. We can see there's a lot of interesting activity on the west side of the highway, but we're going to do that later in the video. For right now, let's take a look at the main factory. The sun has just come up, but with the clouds, it gives a nice diffuse lighting, and we get a good view of the inside of the west part of the factory. This is very similar to what you would see from the highway if you were driving by. And uh, I'll just uh, give you some views here. We'll move in closer and uh, take a look at a few areas inside the factory. But we'll start here at the West Main entrance. And we see that uh, there are some crews doing some work uh, to clean it up. And this follows the Argentinian uh, president that visited a couple of days ago. We also see Model Y production and the end of line facility uh, busy more cars inside getting ready to come out on those ramps and then be prepared for shipping. As we get a little closer, some good views of the inside of the 
Uh, second and third floors of this part of the building. The second floor is the offices. The third floor in this part is where much of the structural packs are uh, assembled and prepared for installation into the vehicles. As we continue to fly along this side, we see a cafeteria on the second floor, some of the 4680 cell production on the third floor, and of course this section of the apron that has had the concrete saw cut removed and uh, uh, looks like some more work on that one opening. I'll zoom in here. You can see some of the production equipment for the 4680s on the third floor and more of the offices on the second floor. If you look in carefully, you can see through down to the first floor of that one section showing some of the large machines that are used for the 4680. Of course, on the third floor here is where the rolls of the uh, cathode and the jello, jelly roll material that goes inside the battery cath battery itself are made. And more of the interior shots here on the northwest corner of the facility. So I'll zoom back out and we'll continue to fly around the northwest corner and take a look at uh, more of the activity that is going on here inside the part of the 4680 cell production area that is being expanded. A lot of the doors are open with good lighting so you can get a good view into some of the open areas on the first, second, and third floors and even some on the fourth floor here. And uh, this is just a good view of the activity as the work inside continues to expand that production capability. Now on the north end of the factory here, passing the plastics and also the two platforms for the paint shop. We round the northeast corner and we see that uh, not only has some of the rack mounts been moved away from the wall, but of course the new roll-up door that has been cut into the wall and uh, you see that uh, asphalt ramp going inside. Uh, also, a little bit of view on the inside as well. Now, this is not the only new addition to the building for uh, these roll-up doors and there's going to be a couple more that I will show you throughout the video and one is coming up here next to where all of this rework is being done on the uh, concrete apron and in and amongst where we see some of the castings for the Cybertruck on the left and here's a good view of the amount of the concrete being removed on these ramps into those three receiving doors and I think those are going to be replaced more of the concrete being removed here and of course, the section that has had all of the screw type piers installed, most uh, have had all of their stems cut off. And they're preparing the grade for most likely uh, rebar and some sort of uh, concrete for either a structure or some sort of extension. And we'll take a look at that uh, as it continues to develop over the coming weeks. As we fly up onto the roof, we see these ventilation ducts and the ducted fans, also that pipe that uh, is going from left to right across the screen, then that extends two thirds of the length of the building. We see another section of the pipe leading up on the left-hand side of the screen, and those sections that were lifted up on my previous video waiting for installation. So more work on that uh, very long pipe that connects most of the building. As we cross over Tesla Road, I wanted to show you the work that's going on with these uh, concrete vaults and the uh, conduit, you can see some of the red uh, concrete has been put on top of the conduits and they're starting to fill in these uh, sections of the trenches. And that is a good sign that this is at least progressing uh, for the point of time that they want. And there's going to be more that's going to extend further to the north along the right hand side of the screen. Here's a good view of the Megapack site today. And uh, no real work, but we did notice that the contractor trailer that was in that south yard has been removed. So uh, mo no more real construction on the mega packs and that trailer removal uh, kind of uh, confirms that uh, opinion. As we fly up over the power lines, we can see more of the conduit being installed here, proceeding from the south to the north. Again, some of that uh, red concrete on top of those uh, co the conduit bundles, more of the bundles preparing for installation at some point in the near future. So we can see some more by the towers on the upper left. And then here's where concrete vaults are gonna be installed in the bottom of the screen and more of the conduit uh, reaching up for a 90 degree turn and going into that second control trailer 
of the south end of the permanent electrical switch yard. And here's a good view of some of the work that is going on with this amount of uh, conduit and how it is shaping up right now. So let's get ready and take a flight over towards the dye shop and battery cathode plant and see what's going on over there today. Good view here of the south end of the dye shop, that new ramp, that receiving door, this kind of triangular section waiting for concrete and the work for the main entrance. We also see a, another section of concrete being prepared uh, in front of these two doors and uh, next to that uh, large receiving door. Also, the lighting is almost good enough to see inside, but there's too many reflections on the window. So we'll proceed uh, further to the north and take a look at the expanding asphalt section that is uh, being applied. And this will eventually cover this entire side. You can see there's a large section next to the north uh, furnace of the dye shop here. And it looks like they're preparing more concrete uh, slabs uh, next to those doors on that uh, middle right hand side of the screen. As I turn the drone back towards the north, this is a good view of this prepared surface with the geotextile membranes and then the two layers of dirt on top. This will all be asphalt uh, soon. And of course, more of the steel corrugated pipe for the underground water management system waiting for its turn to be installed. And a good view on that northeast corner up to the top left of all the material and some of the dirt that uh, remains on that side of the site. The lift station in the center of the screen with some of those access doors open. That north end uh, con concrete pad with the five receiving doors. More of that uh, uh, excavation work next to the wall on the left hand side of the screen. And as we continue to proceed towards the south, a couple of developments that I want to point out. One, the rubbish chute has been removed. The temporary platform is remaining, but it looks like there's some work on the ground. Also, taking this opportunity, give you a view of the inside of this uh, third floor of the cathode plant. I'll zoom in slightly. You can see some of the equipment that is installed here. Also, some of the ducting. And I was expecting, or I would expect to see this continuing on both sides of the opening of this part of the cathode plant. Here's also a good view of the chiller plant and how it is looking now. We still have these temporary stairs on this northwest corner. Uh, more of the uh, work here on the bottom of the screen for those four uh, stainless steel tanks. And you can see the plumbing that has been installed on the top and the scaffolding has been removed. We also see some uh, work next to that uh, a white tank on the right. Uh, when I was here slightly earlier, I got some photos. That door was open, so I got some stills on the inside. The crash test facility is busy. We see several cyber trucks have been uh, crash tested, so that indicates that that work is continuing. We see just a few items remaining next to these uh, trailers on the right hand side of the screen. And of course, a good view here of that white water tank, the great covered kind of bath with that crash wall at the south end of that new site. So let's uh, fly along the east side just to get a good view here of the warehouse on wheels on the left, the employee overflow lot, uh, which is not very full at this time of the day. And of course, the east parking lot is reasonably full, but uh, there have been some rumors that some of the production may be uh, stopped for a week, particularly for the cyber trucks. And if that is the case, then that explains why we're seeing relatively few cars uh, in the parking lot. But it is also early, so they may be coming in a little later. As we approach the northeast corner of the casting machine structure again, I'll zoom in so you get a good view from a different vantage point of all that work we saw earlier with the concrete removal and the screw type piers into this large section. Also many of the castings that uh, are stacking up here and uh, just some additional work. On the middle of the screen, we see another new receiving door has been saw cut in. Uh, the roll-up door has been installed and we see that asphalt ramp to get in. And of course, the new concrete apron with the new uh, 
racks with the castings just next to those uh, towers. Good view of this uh, concrete area waiting for final preparation of the dirt so that we can see the concrete replaced. And of course, these five receiving doors with all the concrete and those retaining walls. Just that one section near the East Main uh, entrance that uh, still is being worked and prepared for concrete. As I turn towards the East testing and calibration lot, we'll see that uh, it's just pretty much all cyber trucks. They are using the superchargers for some of them, and uh, they're just kind of stacking up here. This lot is normally used to do last minute checks or do some uh, testing or final calibration work. Once that is done, then these vehicles are then moved to the outbound lot. And on the west side, we're going to see a lot of the cyber trucks. So it looks like they're taking this opportunity to get these vehicles uh, checked out and moved to the outbound lot. The Robotic Avenue extension has got its asphalt now, and you can also see those steel corrugated pipes. As I pull away, you can see at the bottom of the screen where it will eventually connect and extend Robotic Avenue all the way along this east side. But here's a good low down view of how this asphalt and this new road is appearing. Eventually, there'll be medians and lighting along this uh, entire roadway. The two cranes are still idle, not been uh, removed yet, but the main structure of the multi-level parking garage is completed. Now they're working on the concrete and all of the floors and on the roof section. They've also been doing steel corrugated pipe trenching along either side as part of the water management system. And then this is a good view of where Robotic Avenue will eventually continue into this intersection and then where River Road on the left will continue through this uh, section with all of the dirt that's being prepared over to the existing road on the south end of the factory. And as I turn the drone back towards the north is a good view of the multi-level parking garage, a lot of the materials, and of course, Robotic Avenue and the new asphalt along the right-hand side of the screen. I'll bring the drone down a little lower, give you some views of the roof section where the steel mesh is being prepared to be put onto the next section of the roof and then they will pour concrete much like we see here. There also seem to be some sort of scaffolding or rack mounts that were along that south side and some maintenance on where they're gonna be installing some of the elevators on the left-hand side of the screen. As I turn back towards the multi-level parking garage, this is just a good view of all the work that uh, is uh, continuing and how it is starting to shape up. Plus, if we look down underneath the power lines, a good view of the east side of the body in white and the stamping machine structure of Giga Texas. And much of the activity, including some of those trailers for recycling the scraps from the stamping machine. As we get to the south end extension, we can tell that more of the steel has been erected around those tanks, more of the roof and floor decking has been installed. And also, as I zoom in, we get a good view of some of the concrete work that's going on in that middle section between the existing and the new structure. Good view uh, zoomed in of the tanks and that steel structure. And of course, the mystery construction that is continuing here at the bottom of the screen. All of the footings closest to us have been poured with concrete and the forms have now been moved to the next pit. They've had the mud pit installed as well and they're getting ready for those columns. We also see a wall, kind of a uh, form being set up inside that part of the factory on the ground floor. And that is going to be something uh, interesting to watch and see how it develops as the work continues. Another view of this mystery structure on the bottom of the screen. And as we uh, fly up over the power lines and then down into the uh, space between the new extension and the original building, this will give you a good view of the concrete work that is underway, plus some trenching along the uh, sort of center right of the screen. You can also tell that the concrete here is rather thick comparing it to the workers. And that is interesting considering that it didn't have really any rebar in it, but some people have been saying it might be a fiber reinforced concrete. So I suppose that is possible, but we see some more of that section here. We see another area of the steel has been erected in the right-hand side of the screen and work is continuing to extend that now. So this is the first of that new steel into this uh, opening area. We see more form work here on that uh, square excavation on the right, the underground uh, tunnel, and more excavation 
excavation work nearby there as well. Good view of the second floor and more of those two concrete, uh, almost vault-like tunnels on the ground floor of the uh, extension of the building. I'm going to stay here on the roof for a second and show you the parapet wall is being installed. The crews are busy doing that right now. They have the forms and framework up and now they're putting some of the wall boards on and this will give that uh, kind of squared off top appearance of the factory despite the fact that it's pitched for water management. As I come back down on the southeast side, it's a good view of some of the materials, some rebar, some steel beams on the left, the glass, and of course that uh, wall kind of form that's being prepared on the southeast side inside that ground floor area. Good look at all of the glass and that parapet wall, and uh, there will be concrete wall panels on top of the glass at the, and then meeting up the top of the parapet wall to give it that finished look. Good view along the south end of where all the glass will eventually be installed. All of the mounts are, for the most part, there, and most of the black framing is there as well. Good look at that concrete vault-type uh, structure, almost a tunnel on the ground level. More material here. And there's also some guide wire or guy wires that uh, are connecting the building and then down to some shoring. Uh, along this side of the building, so I'm paying attention to that so we don't run into it. But it's also a good view of that trapezoidal atrium for possibly a new entrance. Some tunnel uh, trenching on the bottom of the screen with that red concrete. More of the glass here waiting for installation. And uh, I'm going to put up a, a diagram here. You see those uh, black marks on the screen? This is where the window line will be, and that was approximately what it will look like. So we'll continue to monitor that as the windows are installed. The rubbish chute is very busy today, but we also see a new cut-in door uh, next to that rubbish chute. So that is another one of those additions to the factory. And you can see kind of an asphalt ramp there as well. So interesting that they continue to modify the structure in this way in multiple places. There are no cyber trucks here on this west staging lot next to these trailers. I was kind of expecting to see some of them, but they've all been cleared out. Also, I wanted to show you a close-up of the berm here next to that tree. Uh, I don't see any activity here right now, although we do see three poles uh, in the middle and the, the left side of the screen. I think that's where the tunnel is going to come through and we can look across the road and here's a close-up in of that tunneling operation and how it is progressing today. What we see here is the crews preparing to get the Proof Rock 3 back in operation to continue the tunneling. Right now the belt and the conveyor is not operational but we uh, saw in uh, earlier when I was doing some photos, the crews uh, doing their morning uh, briefing, and then now they're all at their stations getting ready for the equipment to become uh, operational and continuing that tunneling. Uh, as I was leaving the site, I noticed the belts uh, and the uh, conveyors were operational with dirt uh, uh, on them. So the tunneling operation was resumed again here today. We do see a lot of the tunnel segments uh, lined up here next to the three silos of the grout uh, uh, plant and also the generators on the left and of course the belt cassette for the conveyor to bring the spoils, the dirt into this uh, containment facility and next to that red excavator. So this is a good close-in view of all of this operation. As I bring the drone up, I wanna give you a good view from this vantage point of where the tunnel is now, how it's proceeding, and where it will most likely end up. And there is that open section of the factory with the open uh, um, perimeter grade beam, just a beam where this uh, tunnel is underway. So still watching to see how this is going to progress and where it will exit on that other side. Here's a good view of the spoils containment area. Some people have noted that they uh, mix in different kinds of dirt in addition to the dirt coming out of the tunnel, and that may be just because of the composition of what is coming out of the tunnel. We do see that uh, train with more of the 
uh, tunnel segments getting ready to go into the boring tunnel itself. And as I pull away, this is a good overall view of the entire operation. Now, as I mentioned in the intro on Thursday, I'm going to be getting a tour of the boring facility over at Bastrop, Texas, and hopefully I'll be able to ask uh, some questions about uh, the operations here at Giga Texas. And hopefully, if I can, I will share what I uh, learn. As we fly up over this dirt section with all of these concrete vaults, I did want to show you all of the cyber trucks that are stacked up here on the south end of the superchargers. Of course, more in the superchargers as well, and more coming out of the end of line south end, as you can see with those uh, moving cyber trucks. We don't see as many model Ys here as we did on my previous video. And I'm not sure if that's uh, another change in operation or if they're just kind of figuring out their new operational flow, but uh, it is something that I wanted to point out. We do see uh, kind of a ramp with a roof on the left. More of the cyber trucks lined up here along the east side of the end of line and two main rows and then additional ones along the building and in between. And then of course, a lot more on the north end as well. Plus, we see that uh, spray pressure uh, washing booth uh, not doing very many vehicles right now, but uh, it is uh, ready for any new vehicles or vehicles moved from the east side over to this uh, point and getting ready for the processing. So as I continue to turn around, I'll give you a good view of the operations here on the north end. And again, all of the cyber trucks stored on the left-hand side of the end of line facility. Now, as I continue to fly towards the west, not only are we seeing the asphalt in all of this new parking lot area on the right, uh, we also can see a lot of cyber trucks that are being stored here. Uh, I'm not uh, really counting all of them, but there's uh, definitely a more than 100 in, in this one location as well. And we see more of the cyber trucks being parked here. Now, there are some uh, reports that there is an issue with the cyber trucks, so it has caused a pause in production of approximately a week to approximately the 20th of April. And if that is in fact true, that would explain why we are seeing all of these cyber trucks uh, kind of stacking up here at Giga Texas. In addition to that, we do see a lot of the quick silver painted Model Ys stacking up as well. They are being put into this large group on the north end of the outbound lot. And just looking at the lights, it look like they're the current variety of the Model Ys, but in the Quicksilver. So maybe they're trying to make up a large number of these and have them ready for when orders begin. You can also see many of them intermixed in all the Model Ys here, including this section of the end of line facility with a lot of them lined up. And I also noticed that the license plate frames on these Model Ys are all US standard. So uh, there was some speculation that maybe they're being prepared for uh, other markets, but it looks like they're at least the license plates that are similar for the United States. More of the Model Ys and some cyber trucks on the west side of the end of line facility. As I get over to the staging yard, um, taking the opportunity of the lighting. Also, I noticed there was activity near the superchargers, so I wanted to come over and uh, get a view of what's going on here. These have been assembled on this location. They've been stored here for a short period of time. We also see some of the older ones in the uh, center of the screen, but this crane was in the process of lifting this uh, particular set of superchargers up and placing it onto the trailer so it can be moved for installation. And as I was leaving the site, I saw the crane having that in the air. So I know that they were at least loading it up onto that trailer. So it'll be interesting to see where that comes out and where it's installed. This large section getting more earthwork. Uh, I'm taking advantage of the lighting and conditions to get you down lower, get a good view of the grade that continues to be lowered across this entire section. In fact, you can almost see a berm next to the houses that has been created. So that may indicate the overall uh, height of this once it's completed. The purpose of this, I'm still not 100% sure. And of course, this new parking lot, possibly outbound lot with all of the 
uh, conduits and the lighting mounts uh, mostly completed now. Some of the steel corrugated pipes uh, waiting here for installation at a later time. But uh, interesting to see how this is continuing to develop. So that's a good look at Giga Texas on the 15th of April, 2024. I hope you enjoyed what we were able to see and thank you very much for your support.